Hi, my name is Libby Crayling and I'm a member of the LCA Visual Arts team. Humans are visual creatures. What we see and touch has a major impact on mood and understanding. The visual arts, the art we look at, can help proclaim God's word, help us to understand what we hear and create an environment which helps us to receive and respond to everything God is doing in worship. Visual elements reach people at all ages and levels of understanding and often transcend barriers of language and culture. There are many visual elements in worship. Architecture and layout, furnishings like altars, lecterns, pulpits, crucifixes, paraments, banners and vestments, flowers and other temporary displays, performance art including dance and drama, visual presentation media and digital art. It is important that the worship environment creates a space where God's people can worship Him, leaving behind the everyday and entering into a sacred space, where they can rest in God's presence, meditate on His Word and worship Him with joy. It's good to have a way to define the space as a special place where God meets His people in worship. This could be as elaborate as a fully decorated church building or as simple as a circle of stones or chairs around a central cross. Layout, furniture and equipment, which assists in the proclamation and hearing of the gospel. Can the pastor be seen and heard? Is there some means of sharing the words for the reading? Is there a cross to remind the people of Jesus' saving work for us? It's good to have a space which reminds the congregation of the sacrament of baptism. Is there a font or visual elements linking us to our baptism? And it's important to have a space which emphasises how central communion is. Is there an altar area where the communion elements can be seen and accessed? Is there a space which encourages people to respond appropriately in prayer and praise? This does not rule out the possibility of the space being created temporarily, being part of a flexible area. An analogy is the way a special place can be created for a birthday party in an ordinary living room or outdoors. One traditional means of creating and adding to a sacred space is the use of paraments, banners, altar cloths, dressings for the lectern and pulpit and other decorations which beautify the space and make it easier for people to connect to the season of the church year, to the means of grace and to what God is doing through his word and his people in the body of Christ. The colours used change according to the seasons or Sunday of the year. The pastor's stole, the strip of coloured cloth worn around his neck, also changes in the same way. In Exodus 28, God tells Moses, And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for glory and for beauty. A great deal of care goes into the design and creation of these vestments, special clothes, and they often include symbols and colours. Each season of the church calendar is associated with specific colours. The main colours used and their symbolism include white, the colour of perfection, purity and holiness. White is used for Christmas, Easter Sunday and the Sundays immediately after these festivals, as well as Transfiguration and Epiphany which are focused on Christ. White is also the colour for Trinity Sunday and for Maundy Thursday, in recognition that the Feast of Victory, Communion, is being celebrated. Gold, the colour of victory, glory and majesty, may be used instead of white during the Easter and post-Easter season. Violet is the colour of royalty but it also symbolises penitence, being sorry for one's sins. It may be used during both Advent and Lent. Both periods have a penitential aspect while looking forward to festivals for our King. If the same paraments are used for both seasons, then extra care should be taken with the symbols used so they are appropriate for both. Green is the colour of life and growth. It is used for those times of the year which focus on growth in faith and discipleship such as the Sundays after Pentecost and Epiphany. Red is the colour of blood and fire and is used on days which mark great events in the work and ministry of the Christian Church, such as Pentecost, Many Saints Days and Reformation Sunday. Black is the colour of mourning. It is only used on Good Friday and Easter Saturday. It is the opposite of white and symbolises the death of Christ. Blue is the colour of anticipation and hope. It may be used instead of violet in Advent in anticipation of Christ's coming, but it's not used in Lent. Paintings and other artworks can be added to the worship environment. 
there's a wonderful tradition stretching back many centuries of artworks being used as altarpieces and throughout a space to teach and uplift the people. Images from a range of time periods and cultures can draw people of different ages and backgrounds into the worship space. Flowers, candles and other temporary installations are often used to add beauty and meaning to the worship space. Floral artists make use of symbols, liturgical colours and other items which connect to the readings or the central message of the worship service. At Pentecost, for example, you might see tall flame-like arrangements of red, yellow and orange flowers spiralling upwards, representing the tongues of fire above the heads of worshippers at Pentecost. At particular times of the church year, traditional displays such as Advent wreaths or Jesse trees may be used to help mark the development of the season or emphasise its significance. At All Saints, a sandbox of candles may be set up so that those mourning the death of a loved one can light a candle. While many of these displays help us to connect to believers through the ages, there are other displays which may be unique to a particular time or place. Worship can also be enhanced through the use of drama or liturgical dance. This can range from the simple dramatisation of the Bible readings using different people to read the narration, through to skits and even plays on special occasions such as Easter and Christmas. As with all the arts, the emphasis should be on enhancing the word and what God is doing in the service, rather than on individual performance. With the advent of new technologies, churches and worship spaces increasingly use screens and other digital projections to present lyrics, orders of service and announcements. They can also be used to screen videos to add to the message of the service. Services of course are now being live streamed or recorded for use on computers. In addition to their functionality, these media provide an opportunity for visual enhancement of the worship service. Directional and coloured lighting can make a big impact. Colours, images and even animations can add to or detract from the sacred space and the proclamation of the word. These forms should work with and complement the other visual arts and the elements of worship. Almost all of these forms of visual art make good use of two elements, colour and symbol. Symbols are a great way to help people identify with and remember key messages or ideas. The cross is the most obvious symbol of the Christian faith, but there are many more, often associated with the sacraments and with the seasons of the church year. Baptism, for example, is often associated with a dove descending, reminding us of the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus when he was baptised, and also with a scallop shell, often with three drops of water, symbolising the triune God into which we are baptised. Symbols of communion include the chalice, bread and the Lamb of God. An open Bible is a symbol of the Word. Some symbols, like the Luther Rose, the Anchor, Cairo, Alpha and Omega, and even the fish, may need some explanation for newcomers. Visual symbolism is limited by culture and history, and so the symbols used by a congregation in worship need to have meaning in the culture of the congregation. That said, teaching children and others in the congregation about the meaning of symbols and pointing them out in worship can be a great way to pass on the faith and help people remember the gospel. Each congregation is a community of believers in a particular time and place. Different symbols and visual elements will speak differently to different groups. Our church buildings and worship spaces may look quite different to each other. Our pastors may or may not wear traditional robes and stoles. We might favour traditional paraments and formal flower arrangements, or prefer digital animations and light shows. Whatever the style of your congregation, think about how the visual elements you use help teach, encourage and inspire people in their walk with God.